I would like to start off with a few fu fundamentals um, that I think are describing um, the approach of decision modeling and optimization using artificial intelligence. And hopefully that will also help you to better understand um, when Peter is talking about what he did and what results he, he achieved. So let me start with what we're defining as decision optimization. It's about using a mathematical optimization process to develop better decision strategies. So we're focusing here on the decisions rather than on the models only. Um, and those decision strategies in the best case um, should be more profitable, more manageable, and meet business goals and constraints. What we are leveraging in doing that is what we're calling decision impact modeling, which is combining profit modeling, prediction and action effect modeling, and business expertise. As FICO, we are providing to our customers the business user-friendly um, software um, that has an industry-leading optimization solver um, to be used for solving the optimization problems, but it's also giving a wide range of tools for scenario analysis and stress testing. Um, and at the end of it, um, i.e. operationalizing the, de um, de the decision strategies is via a decision tree or a rules um, output. So hopefully you will see this um, later on. Um, but what I want to start with is a, um, a view on what a, um, a, a portfolio manager would typically, typically looking at in a context of loan originations. And what you see on the right hand side, maybe it's, it's a bit small, but basically what it shows is business as usual and what everybody as a portfolio manager should know about um, his portfolio. So it's about how many applications do I have? How many accept rejects um, do I have? Uh, what's my take up rates and, and so forth. But in, in managing those portfolios, really what everybody is uh, managing is the profit and, and loss. So the average interest rate, um, the, the volumes uh, produced and, and so forth. Now, starting with that, the typical question for any portfolio manager is what if? What is happening to my portfolio if I keep the same pricing? Well, that's the expectation that you see on the right hand side. But also um, to actively manage your portfolio and steer your port portfolio, um, you probably want to have a view on what happens to my portfolio and my KPIs if I maximize net interest income or alternatively if I maximize origination volumes, which are competing goals or anything in between, i.e. if I want to increase both net interest income and volume. So typically how this is approached in any, um, in any banking or financial organization is on the one hand, you have known information that can be credit bureau data, demographic data, application data, or competitor information. And on the other hand, you're measuring um, your outcomes with the key metrics for the portfolio, which can be subsumed under revenue, loss, cost, and capital. And then, um, typically, you're working from left to right. Everybody will have some known primary and secondary goals. The, the, the main goal, obviously, for a um, credit portfolio is profitability, portfolio profitability. But you might also have some, um, some goals on accept rate, i.e. keeping um, a, a market share um, or the loss rate, which is given by um, the risk controlling or risk management. Um, and what you then do is using segmentation and predictive analy analytics, um, starting with customer segments, building strategies or segmentations as it is. Um, using bureau scores and predictive scores. And once you have built your, um, your segmentation, um, then you're assigning the different actions that or decisions that need to be taken in a loan originations example, as it's shown here. So the main, the key decisions are a pricing decision, a loan and amount decision, a term decision, and of course, an accept reject decision. Once you have implemented that, 
you're then measuring the outcomes um, and continue the same process in a champion challenger approach probably um, which is then looking at okay this is the result um, on my measured on my kpis for uh, the business as user strategy how can i find better strategies um, that give me different different results the challenge with that is that you have numbers of customers and you not only have one action in this pricing example here for each customer i can offer him different prices so the question is what is the best decision for each individual customer so that's the complexity that is typically solved and operationalized with FICO decision optimization, i.e. coming up for each customer, what is on the account level, the best decision, in this instance, the pricing decisions, and then building a, a decision strategy as a result of, um, of that to implement into operations and to assign you, to your newly defined micro segments. So in a nutshell, decision modeling and optimization um, starts with the same the inputs known information to be used to make a decision that is including not only the data but any predict predictions you have for the in individual customer and on the other hand what you want to manage is your portfolio profitability within constraints constraints can be internal and external constraints um, it can be capital constraints but it can also be constraints like I want to keep my portfolio um, on the same market share. I don't want to lose any, any market share. Um, or I want to, um, to observe or to achieve um, a, an average interest rate of X, Y, or Z. And this can be, be for particular segments of your portfolio as well. So what we're doing with decision modeling and optimization is we're starting from the right hand side defining the profit and con the, the the goals in this instance the profit and the constraints we look at what are the key metrics and we then use the data and all the possible decisions um, and actions that can be can, can be taken to run for each and every customer um, using what you see in the middle um, the decision model and optimize for each customer and on the uh, on the portfolio what is the um, optimal decision for each and every customer. Now, while we're while we have been um, or I've been talking about loan decisions, here's an example for a credit card line initial line offers. It's, we have a customer here with a known risk score, revenue score, revenue balance, time and file. Um, and, and seg segment, and in this simple example, um, we can offer two di three different um, lines to the customer. So having implemented what I have shown before, um, the decision model and being able to run the data, the historic data that, um, that I have through this, um, this framework, I can offer, I can see that if I'm offering a customer a line of 10,000 euros, my expected balance will be 1,500, the expected loss 68, and that results in an expected profit um, of 105. Now, there's a second offer I can make, 12,500. You can see from the right-hand side box, um, balance is going up, as is uh, loss, and the profit is above the 10,000 um, line offer now if i think more is better um there is a point and this is at the, uh, the the third offer that is shown here where balance and loss are going up but disproportionate and that results in a lower profit for this individual customer and basically the key to the approach here is uh, what we're calling the action effect model i.e. having models predicting the response for each and every customer, for each and every offer or action I can, uh, I can take, and taking this into, um, into the framework that is then um, solvable using mathematical optim optimization. 
the key here is that what is underlying the approach is what we're calling uh, what you see here an influence diagram. Any, any decision that you're taking is multidimensional. It has different inputs. It has um, expectations on customer behavior. It has predictions on customer behavior. It also needs to um, look at um, the profit um, formulas, the, the capital formula, if you uh, want to, um, to include this, to actually calculate revenue, um, loss and cost, um, and therefore the, the profitability. So what seems to be a very easy uh, problem, looking at, for example, what's the price decision for a customer, if you look at all the influence, uh, influencing factors, and if you look at the expectations that you need to have or the predictions um, that you need to build in, it becomes quite um, complex. So with the approach that we're, uh, that we're propagating and that we're leveraging with our customers or our customers as Peter are leveraging themselves um, in, the, uh, in the software that we're providing is eventually leading to the point where um, you have transparency on the portfolio in the sense of you see where your current operating point is. That's the triangle in the middle. And there are different um, strategies you can run your, um, your portfolio at or operational points. And there's always trade-offs. So what you see in this example here is what we're calling an efficient frontier. Along this efficient frontier is all optimized strategies but then you can choose between those different strategies looking at where you want to move your, your portfolio. And this very basic example here in, is <clears throat> looking at two different scenarios. One is what, what do I need to do if I want to keep my portfolio at the same risk but um, maximize the profit per account or vice versa um keep the same profit level but minimize the the risk so that's the the, the two end points if you like um, of the scale and there's different strategies in between so that brings me back to um, the starting qu question what if um, the what if questions can be answered with this efficient front here once you have implemented this, and this is a screenshot from our solution, you see different points um, where you can operate your portfolio, which are answering the question, what is if I maximize net, net risk income, i.e. what is the most we can increase net interest income by, how much origination volume must we give up to achieve this, um, and vice versa, what if I maximize origination volume how much net interest income must we give up to it achieve this? So above and beyond the pure optimization or finding the one optimized strategy, what the approach is providing is a rich simulation and scenario analysis capability. So this is what I'm showing on, on the screen here. If you may remember where I started, I had the business as usual. In this, um, in this table here. And what you see as additional columns here is different scenarios that have been defined and that can be defined as maximize uh, origination volume, maximize net interest rate, um, or using any constraints. Um, for example, um, keep, don't maximize origination volume, uh, but increase origination volume to a particular um, scale. And what it gives you then um, is a view on what's happened to my portfolios along the KPIs that you have um, defined, along profits and loss, but also along margin calculations. <clears throat> 